Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'll just start with an opening statement. I want to thank you first for the opportunity to be here today and brief you on the recent incidents involving surface forces in the Western Pacific. The comprehensive review that examined the systemic issues surrounding these incidents and then review the corrective action. Before I begin, I must say that uh, throughout this investigative process, our first and last thoughts have been with our fallen sailors and their families. And I want to offer my deep condolences to those who lost a loved one and ensure them that they will always be part of the Navy family. Our Navy, from the most junior sailor to the most senior commander, must value achieving and maintaining high operational and warfighting standards of performance. And these standards must be embedded in our equipment, our individuals, our teams, and our fleets. And the Navy is absolutely committed to doing everything possible to prevent a tragic loss like this again. We should never allow an accident like this to take the lives of such magnificent young sailors and inflict such painful grief on their families, the Navy, and the nation. We must get this right, and we will. We own this, and we're moving out. Thank you for your time again, and I look forward to your questions. Admiral, um, obviously this review was about the Seventh Fleet, but as you look across the Navy and its ships as a whole, don't some of these problems also exist perhaps in other AORs? And what are you doing to look at some of those and how do you replicate some of this across the other ships in your fleet? Or is this just Seventh Fleet and do you need more ships there? So to, to uh, start, to get started, we had to contain the uh, investigation, the scope of the investigation. And so we did concentrate on where we were seeing the problems, which is the uh, cruiser and destroyers out in the Seventh Fleet. That's where we started, both with the uh, incident investigations, obviously, and also with the comprehensive review. Now that we have that investigation complete, you know, it's my intention. In fact, I just transmitted a message to all commanding officers, similar audience that I transmitted the operational pause message, for them to study this at all levels of command to figure out and, and, and determine, you know, where are they might be vulnerable to the findings in the comprehensive review and also to take a look at what of the recommended actions might apply to them. And I've asked them to put together a report report to their uh, superiors, and I'll see the, the consolidated uh, results of that effort. But do okay. you think it's likely that this, some of these problems exist? I will tell you, areas? we have the ultimate uh, test for uh, our effectiveness is combat operations. And uh, as I pointed out, you know, we have a four deployed fleet. And over this year, in the not too distant past, and currently right now, we, they are performing exquisitely in the highest uh, degree of combat. And so we're going to go out with the sense that we want to look at everybody and find uh, vulnerabilities and plug them where they exist. You've used the word failure uh, many times, uh, but you haven't used the word negligence. Was there negligence involved in either of these accidents? Yes. Well, by uh, several people. I mean, we found that the commanding officers were at fault. Uh, the executive officers are at fault. There are some watchstanders on the uh, ships, and we've we've been uh, pretty clear about you know identifying uh, where there was fault and taking appropriate accountability actions up to and including the uh, Seventh Fleet commander. And do you anticipate legal action against uh, some of those uh, guilty of negligence? I've assigned Admiral Frank Caldwell to be a consolidated disposition authority to take a look, comprehensive look at uh, all of these and to uh, make his recommendations with respect to any further action we may do. Uh, Dan Lamont, Washington Post. I wanted to ask you about transparency through all this. Uh, your report that you released yesterday kind of mentioned you trying to balance the legal concerns for the country along with uh, trying to get information out about the McCain incident and the Fitzgerald incident. Right. At the same time, the Navy is still withholding all documents requested through FOIA on the Lake Champlain collision. Can you explain that dichotomy and what will be happening there? I'll, I'll take a look into the uh, request on the Lake Champlain uh, incident. I wasn't familiar that that uh, has been held up. Uh, there are legal concerns that uh, have to be uh, recognized and, and uh, addressed. 
Uh, but it has been a pretty consistent uh, thrust through this effort, including the release of the full comprehensive review, uh, release of the uh, descriptions of the uh, Fitzgerald and McCain incidents to maintain that level of transparency. So I'll check on the uh, what we can release on the uh, Lake Champlain. So a similar level of transparency with these other incidents? Uh, I'll tell you what, I, I will do that. The Lake Champlain will come up with you know, a similar uh, description of that incident that uh, we put together for uh, Fitzgerald and McCain, okay? Uh, right. The Lake Champlain CO uh, relieved. Antietam, you know, runs aground in Tokyo Bay. That CO is relieved. Fitzgerald CO triad is relieved. McCain triad relieved. You guys won't not only release that report, but this guy uh, changed command last month, and you guys put out, you know, the Navy news press release. Yeah, each one of those it. cases is evaluated independently, uh, consistent with this uh, commitment. I'll, I'll get to that answer as well. At the beginning of the briefing, you were mentioning about the size of the U.S. Navy and just the number of ships in general. But are these two incidents any kind of proof or indication that the U.S. fleet may have become too large to effectively manage or supervise? No. No, we've got uh, command structures in place that allow, you know, that to uh, proper oversight uh, and command to exist. Uh, so it's not a question of being uh, too large to command. Okay. No Thank you all very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you.